Valkia the Bloody, a name that commands respect from the Norsecan tribes and fear in equal measure from the rest of the world. Once the warrior queen of the Schwarze Wolf, now she acts as Korn's Valkyrie, rewarding the strong amongst Norska's finest and punishing the weak who either defy Korn's rage or hide in cowardice. We're going to be starting at turn 70, so let's get you up to speed. First of all, in her bloody conquest to reach Sambaijin was Village, giving us two skulls for the price of one and their holes in Kislev. Next was Festus in the Empire, bringing an end to their cowardly poxes and plagues, and Festus's dreams of the perfect room, which is, um, it's Earl Grey Hot, by the way. With these roadblocks out of the way, we have a new goal, to enter the Mountains of Morn and to reap the souls of the ogres. Big lads, big souls, right? We've got rifts back at Frozen Landing in the Goromadni and another in the Empire, so we can back up Valkyr's rampage with additional armies as and when the needs be. Also, our boy Morak's down there. Hi Morak. Right now, we find ourselves at Zorn Uzkul, laying siege to the Greenskins. Sure, they're angry, fighty folk too. So while there's some potential for kinship and alliance, we can't let the blood stop flowing, lest we lose our murderous prowess and bonuses attained from our bloodletting meter. So, um, sorry fellas, but you know, skulls for the skull throne, blood for the blood god. I mean, what even is a Gork and Mork? After we water the earth with our enemy's blood, we will drink whatever's left. The Green Tide have the numbers, sure, but we have chariots, monstrosities, chaotic hatred, and a big hungry boy. Oh, he's, uh, he's having a snack. The Greenskins are learning that numbers only take you so far when you're fighting Korn's Valkyrie and the relentless tide of pure hatred. Eat their souls! Now, the thing about indiscriminate, unabashed bloodshed is that eventually, you're gonna turn a few heads. This is a good thing though, as Korn has taken notice of our bloody conquest through these lands and has decided to impart some gifts for Valkyr's forces. So let's end our turn before we take out Tsar Nagrand and just have a little think about what we'll want next. Oh, uh, what's this? Pangritus won a peace treaty. <laughs> no, get him Morak. Okay, so that instance of violence aside, we have a choice here, from interesting powerful artifacts and boons for our vassals, to a good increase in experience for our forces. We are going to opt for the latter. With this murderous knowledge unlocked, I think it's about time we put down these greenskins, once and for all. The gates of Zarnagrand might currently yes. keep cavalry and other monstrosities at bay, considering they don't know how to climb ladders, but if you think walls will stop Valkyr's fury, then, well, look where that gets you. We'll use Valkyr's wings and terrifying speed to deal with the greenskin reinforcements, while the rest of the army take it to the strategic points and everyone else getting in our way. And uh, to top it all off, Big Sword. Well, with our fun jaunt in Greenskin lands over, it's time to focus on our main goal, the Mountains of Morn, and its tasty, tasty yoga souls. Maybe even Cafe Beyond, if we're feeling desserts. At this time, we're going to invest in new Gifts of Chaos, which become pretty powerful in the late game. We can use these to truly get the most out of our army, making our killing swift, exact, and without compromise. However, we've run over time. The Mountains of Morn are desolate, raised, and those ogre souls are no more. But there is a definite stench in the air, one that Valkyr knows all too well. 
Slaanesh's legions have been here, and if you want to know how she feels about them, just ask her shield. Of course, if you think Valkyr would forgive Azazel and his ecstatic legion for this little transgression, you've not been paying attention. With our vengeance enacted on Azazel's right-hand man, the Prince of Damnation himself is still out there, and we're still just below 60,000 souls. In the Howling Wastes, however, there's a few more treats in store for us. A caravan from Cathay has opted for a holiday in most treacherous lands. Some Darkland Orcs are simply refusing to die, and just over yonder, a beautiful sight. Ogres, my lord. So, let's get to doing what Valkyr does best. You know, separating heads from shoulders. Montage? Montage. With a bloody swathe cut through the howling wastes, we've got the souls we need. And some of them are even ogre souls. Are ogre souls bigger than regular souls? And, uh, no idea. What's important is that we've hit 60,000 souls, and now we can begin our journey to the lost city of Zanbaijin. Move. Now is the time of Valkyr's ascension. Move. 